We are so excited to uh, welcome to the program one of our favorite ever members of any administration, former Vice President of the uh, United States, Dick Cheney, is back with us on the Scott Hennon Show. Mr. Vice President, how are you, sir? Good morning, Scott. Good to catch up with you. Well, it's, it's nice to hear from you, That uh, to know out there you guys haven't completely forgotten us yet. Well, hardly. In fact, we're missing you a whole lot, I want you to know. We just spent the last hour talking about how much so in how many different ways, and uh, a lot of concern, a lot of angst out there that we're going to talk about a little bit on the program. Some people are wringing their hands saying this is an example of why their party needs to change, to hear the message of Specter that we need to, in fact, uh, Colin Powell said uh, the Republican Party needs to moderate. I'm, I'm kind of uh, growing tired of his uh, political tea leaf reading personally. Uh, wish he'd stick to his lane a little bit, but, but do you think the Republican Party needs to moderate? Is that the message of the Specter defection or the state of the party these days? No, I don't. I think uh, I think it'd be a mistake for us to moderate. This is about fundamental beliefs and values and, and uh, ideas and what the role of government ought to be in our society and our commitment to the Constitution and constitutional principles. You know, when you add all those things up, the idea that we ought to moderate basically means we ought to fundamentally change our philosophy. And uh, I, for one, am, am, am not prepared to do that, and I think most of us aren't. Most of the Republicans are, uh, you know, have a, a pretty good idea of values and aren't eager to have somebody come along and say, well, the only way you can win is if you start to act more like a Democrat. I really think, um, you know, we we go through these cycles periodically, Scott. I've been through them before. I remember campaigning across the country with Jerry Ford in 1974 when I was his chief of staff. This was the Watergate election, the first one after Nixon had had to resign. It was a train wreck. I mean, we got blown away in every part of the country. 1976, we lost the presidency. By 1980... Uh, Ronald Reagan was president. We'd had a major resurgence in the party. We'd captured control of the Senate and uh, obviously embarked upon uh, the Reagan era in American politics. So I uh, I think periodically we have to go through one of these sessions. It helps clear away some of the underbrush. Some of the older folks uh, have been around a long time, like yours truly, mm-hmm. uh, need to move on and make room for that young talent that's uh, that's coming along. But I, uh, I think it's basically healthy. Uh, I don't spend a lot of time or lose a lot of sleep over it. I just think now's the time for people who are committed to get out there and find candidates they like and, and go to work for them. Is the Obama administration, do you believe, helping the resurgence of the renaissance of the conservative cause by overreaching this very early on in the administration? I think it will. I watch what he's doing, and especially the uh, national security area, which is uh, sort of my first interest in this whole question of... Uh, of detainees and interrogation of detainees and the terrorist surveillance program and so forth, closing Guantanamo. Um, I don't think the vast majority of Americans support what he wants to do. I think, in fact, most Americans are pleased when they think about it that we were able to go nearly eight years without another major attack on the United States. Uh, they think we handled that pretty well, that piece of it. We were not a perfect administration, none ever is, but... I think um, what we did in the, in the whole counter-terrorist area was was extremely effective, and I think Obama needs to be careful because he appears to want to cancel out some of those most important policies. You know, it's and then a... you get into this whole thing of closing Guantanamo, and of course the the bottom line there is what are you going to do with all these terrorists that are in Guantanamo? By the way, do you believe the uh, the president, uh, uh, the vice president of this current administration, really believes those things did not work and have not worked, or is it just is this all political? Is this basically pandering to, 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 the, to the far left? Well, I, I think what's motivated him from the outset has been, um, as you say, trying to appeal to the far left of their party. I think that was a, an issue for them in the primaries um, on the Democratic side during the last election. Um, I think the, uh, the situation is that if anybody who's got obviously got to have clearances takes a look at uh, the record, they'll find that we had significant success as a result of these policies. Now, one way to to nail that down is that there are two documents in particular that I personally have read and know about that are still still classified in the National Archives. But I've asked that they be declassified. I made that request uh, over a month ago, March 31st. And what those documents show is the uh, success, uh, especially of the interrogation program, in terms of what it produced by way of intelligence that let us uh, track down members of al-Qaeda and uh, 
disrupt uh, their plans and plots to strike the United States. It's all there in black and white. It's work that was done by the Central Intelligence Agency after several years of experience with these programs. It demonstrates conclusively the worth of those programs. Say, I've asked the administration to declassify it. So far, they have not. Yeah, and uh, selectively have released these memos, which is uh, very interesting given their past criticisms as well about politicizing intelligence, because clearly that's what they're doing here. Now, they have said, the president was asked about this in the uh, 100-day press conference the other day, and he said that... uh, Basically, uh, he'd read the memos. Uh, didn't, didn't. I don't know that he was asked whether or not he was going to release them or not. But uh, it is interesting they haven't done that yet, and to come to your request there. But he said basically uh, believes that we could have gotten this information in other ways, in ways that were consistent with our values, in ways that were consistent with who we are. What's your response to that? Well, um, I don't believe that's true. Um, that assumes that we didn't try other ways. In fact, we did, and uh, we were w- resorted. Um, uh, for example, to waterboarding, which is the source of much of the controversy, with only three individuals. And uh, in those cases, it was only after um, we'd gone through all of the other um, steps in the process. So there was the, the way the whole program was set up was uh, very careful to use uh, um, other methods and only to resort to something like uh, um, the enhanced techniques. Uh, in those special circumstances. Three individuals, right? Yeah, well, and, and the waterboarding in particular, which has been the most controversial, was a total of three individuals. Yeah, and, and do, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed being the number one, and of course he was the guy who planned and, and carried out the attack on 9-11, killed 3,000 Americans. I'm sure this is driving the media crazy today, but a CNN story today suggests half the public in a new, po- a po- new poll approves of uh, the Bush administration decision to use those techniques during the questioning of suspected terrorists, also indicates that most Americans don't want to see an investigation of the Bush administration officials who authorized the interrogation techniques on these suspected terrorists. Uh, that that uh, can't be doing uh, the Obama folks uh, any good because they seem to want to kind of perpetuate this. Well, and they, uh, they're especially sensitive to polls, I think. But, yeah, the, the thing that, um, you know, I don't know how long your show is, Scott, but uh, just think about it for a minute. The idea that one administration is going to come in and, and take power, and then they're going to turn around and prosecute or, if not prosecute, sanction lawyers who gave advice um, that they disagreed with to their predecessors. Now, I've never heard of such a thing. And, and talk about putting a, a wet blanket on anybody in government's willingness to, to be bold and um, recommendations and so forth. Uh, you can just forget that. Anybody who sees that kind of thing happen is going to pull their head in, and, and uh, they'll be reluctant to take responsibility for anything. They'll be reluctant to recommend the kinds of actions that were necessary in defending the country over the last eight years. So I um, you know, I hear this talk that there's going to be some kind of foreign prosecution of our guys. I, I just think that's abhorrent. They ought to do everything they can to fight.